Welcome to Excel 2016 class video number 16. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file, Business 218, Video 16, or the PDF files and follow along, click on the link below the video. Oh, man, we got to talk about the Christmas tree feature of Excel, conditional formatting. And we're going to do conditional formatting to visualize data. And we're going to learn about some built-in features, which just take a few clicks. And then the true power of conditional formatting, logical formulas. Here are our 14 topics. Now we're going to start on the sheet, Cells Contain. And the first couple examples, we're going to look at how to do a particular conditional formatting with a built-in feature and with a formula. Now before we see how to add this conditional formatting, let's go over to the answer sheet, Cells Contains Answer, and look at how this works. Here's our criteria. As soon as I select GG, instantly only the cells that contain GG get the formatting. Now here's how conditional formatting works. For all of the cells in the highlighted range, Behind the scenes, there's a true-false logical test. And for each cell, we ask the question, hey, cell content, are you equal to GG? Because it comes out true, the formatting is applied. The next cell gets exactly the same logical test. Hey, cell content, are you equal to GG? Since it comes out false, no formatting is applied. Now, let's go back over to this sheet. And for our first example, we simply want to highlight the range with the sales rep name. And since it's as simple, does the cell contain a particular item, we have a built-in feature. Now, conditional formatting is in the Home ribbon, Styles group, and there's our conditional formatting button. I click the dropdown, and there's a bunch of amazing built-in features, highlight cell rules like is the number greater than? Is the text equal to? Top and bottom rules, we can do the top 10, top 10%, bottom, above average, data bars, color scales, and icons. We will see examples of all of these. Let's do the first one, highlight cell rules. And I want to say, is the cell equal to? Here's our dialog box. And luckily, there's a collapse button, which means we can link the criteria to the cell. So with the cursor in this text box, I select E5. And we're asking the question, is any cell in that range equal to whatever we put in E5? Now, the default is oftentimes not what you want. So we select the formatting dropdown. And here's the real power, custom formatting. One, two, three, four different tabs. For most of my examples, I'm just going to select yellow. You can pick whatever you want and mix and match from whichever tab. I'm going to click OK, click OK, and instantly I have applied conditional formatting. When I select the drop down here and point to GG, only the cells that contain GG get the formatting. Now, if we want to highlight the entire record or the entire row based on a particular condition, there's no built-in feature to do this. Now, luckily, we know how to do logical formulas. And anytime you have a logical formula, it comes out true or false. So the idea here is that in our dialog box for conditional formatting new rules, we're actually going to have to build a formula. Now, before going up to conditional formatting, new rule, and building the formula in the dialog box, most of the time, it's just easier to build the actual logical formula in the cells, copy it over and down, and see if the patterns of trues and falses work over here in the cells. Once you see that the trues and falses are working, then you can paste it into the dialog box. Now, how in the world are we going to do that? That means every single row has to look at the sales rep and ask the question, is it equal to the criteria? When we come down here, is Dewan equal to Gigi? For this record, is that sales rep equal to Gigi? Ah, but remember, each cell has to have a logical test. True or false, is it going to get the color? For this record, all three cells are going to get the color yellow. But watch this. 
the cell is going to say, hey, is the criteria equal to Gigi? And this one is exactly like what we did over here, because the actual cell doesn't contain Gigi. But watch what happens when we go over here. Well, that cell doesn't contain Gigi. Yes, but we can build a formula that's asking the question of the sales rep for this record. Hey, is the sales rep in this record equal to Gigi? True. Is the sales rep for this record equal to Gigi? True. Now, let's come over here and see if we can build this formula. Because remember, all three cells have to get true to get yellow. So we need to see all trues here. When our formula is copied down, since Gigi is not the sales rep, all of these need to say false. All right, you ready? Equals. And I'm going to ask the question of the sales rep for this record. And when this formula gets copied over, it has to be locked on Gigi. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times to lock the column reference, but not the row. And that works perfect, because when I copy down, there's no dollar sign in front of the 5. So the 5 will move to a 6 and see the next sales rep. Then I have to ask the question, hey, are you equal to the criteria? And now I want to lock this in all direction with the F4 key. And that's the formula. Because we have a comparative operator, when I Control Enter, it gives me true or false. When I copy it to the side, there are our three trues. When I copy it down, look at that. The patterns of trues and falses are working fine. All three trues mean one, two, three cells will get the color yellow. All three falses mean one, two, three cells will not get the color yellow. Now, we copied this formula over and then down. So we want to be sure and come to the last cell, F2. And look at that. Our formula is working perfect. Now, you can go to any particular row and watch F2. Hey, that cell is looking at the sales rep for this record and delivers a false. When I come here, F2, that formula is also looking at Mo. Now, notice this formula delivers a false. And even though it's looking at Mo, the result of this formula will govern the formatting for this cell right here. Similarly, F2. This formula is looking at the sales rep for this record. And the result from that formula will govern the formatting for this cell. Now, Escape, we need to highlight the range and go up to Conditional Formatting New Rule. But if we did that, we'd have to retype the formula. And I already created it in the cells. So very careful, I'm going to come to the upper left-hand corner, F2 and copy the formula in edit mode, control C, escape. And then I'm going to highlight the range. And very carefully make sure the active cell is in the upper left-hand corner, parallel to the cell that I copied the formula. If I highlighted it this way with the active cell in the lower right-hand corner, the formula would not work. So I'm very carefully copied the cell from the upper left, make sure the active cell is in the upper left. Now I go up to Conditional Formatting, New Rule. There's a bunch of cool options, and I want the last one when I'm using a formula. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. Then I come down here, Format Values, where this formula is true, and Control-V. Now something very important about this formula, this formula is not going to actually go into the cell because, of course, if it was in the cell, it would replace the content. The dialog box will, in memory, behind the scenes, copy the formula over and then down. The dialog box will deliver a true or false to each one of the cells and either apply the formatting true or not apply the formatting false. Now we have to create our formatting. So I click on the Format button. We have four tabs. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to choose Fill Yellow. Click OK. Click OK. And just like that, the whole row is highlighted. When I change the criteria to Dewan, instantly the record has the formatting. Now, these formulas over here have nothing to do with the actual application of the formatting. I'm going to remove it with Alt-EAA. 
Remember, we just created those formulas because it was easier to see the patterns of trues and falses of how it worked. Then we copy the formula and put it into the dialog box. Now I'm going to Control Z and leave this there as a trail. Now let's go over to our next example on the sheet below average. Now we have the same data set, and here are our sales. And I'd like to highlight any number that is below average. Luckily, there's a built-in feature to do this, conditional formatting, top bottom rules, and then down here we want below average. Now the formatting is that red again, so I'm going to change it. You can change it to whatever you want. Custom format, four tabs. I'm selecting yellow fill. Click OK, click OK. And just like that, it actually behind the scenes calculated the average and said, hey, are you sell content below average? It came out false, so no formatting. Are you sell content below average? It came out true, so it got the formatting. Now, if we would like to highlight the whole row, and probably if it's a big record, we want to see the whole row. We want to see customer sales rep in other data. So in this case, we have no built-in feature. But that's not a problem. We can use a logical formula. And I'm going to build it actually down below the data set in the cells. So in that range right there. Now in this case, for every single cell in the record, we're going to have to look at the sales. So every one of these cells right here have to be looking there. And then we have to compare it to the average. So let's see how to do this. Equals, and this is the upper left-hand cell, as if we're putting the formula in this cell and copying it over. Remember, each one of these cells has to look at the sales. So I'm going to click on the sales number. And as it copies to the side, it needs to be locked. So I hit the F4 key one, two, three times. But that G5 is allowed to move down to G6, which would then give us the next sales number. Then I have to ask the question, are you less than the average? And I'm going to highlight the entire column. And this has to be locked in all directions, because every single cell in this range will have to look at the average. Now there's our formula, Control-Enter. Copy it over, copy it down. And we can see the patterns of trues and falses. All three cells will have to get a true in order to get that formatting. Now I want to go to the diagonally furthest one away and hit F2. And notice the formula works fine. It's looking for this record right here at the sales number and comparing it to the calculated average. In this cell right here, it's looking at the sales number for this record right here and comparing it to the average. This one also looking at the right sales number. Now one downside to this formula is that this average calculation here actually has to calculate in every single cell. It actually would be more efficient to put the average calculation in a helper cell off to the side. And then in the formula, just refer to that. In this example, we're going to leave the average function here in our next example, top three. We'll do a similar example, and we'll use a helper cell. Now, the reason that that matters is because remember, calculation time is sometimes a concern in large spreadsheets. If average function has to calculate in every single cell, that increases calculation time. Not only that. But conditional formatting is actually volatile. Every time you do anything in a spreadsheet, like insert a row or edit a cell and hit Enter, conditional formatting actually recalculates. Not only that, but for big spreadsheets, as you're scrolling down and exposing more cells that contain conditional formatting, it's continually recalculating. Now, I actually have a bunch of notes over in the PDFs that you can read if you'd like. Now, conditional formatting is sort of like a double whammy because it calculates as we scroll down and expose more cells, but also, if we used a formula to determine true or false for the formatting, those formulas also have to calculate. All right, now 
Let's copy the formula in the upper left-hand corner, Control-C, Escape. And now I'm going to highlight the whole range. And the active cell is the upper left. Now I'm going to not do manually conditional formatting new rules. I'm going to use the keyboard, Alt-H-L-N. And here, because I need to get down to the bottom, instead of arrowing down, I'm going to hit Page Down. It actually, when I use Page Down, it jumps to the bottom. Then I'm going to hit Tab to move to the dialog box. So the entire keyboard is Alt, HLN, Page Down, Tab. You don't have to use that keyboard, but if you do a lot of conditional formatting, that's a pretty fast keyboard. All right, now I Control V, and there is the formula that will in memory be copied over and down to deliver trues and falses for our conditional formatting. Now I click on Format. You can use whatever formatting you want. I'm going to say Yellow Fill, click OK, click OK. That is amazing. And I change this to 2,000. Watch what happens. Instantly, the conditional formatting changes. Now I'm going to Control-Z. All right, so below average, we can highlight the whole record with a logical formula. Or if we want just the contents of the cell to be formatted, we can use a built-in feature. Now let's go over to our next example, top three. Now on this sheet, we have the same data set and the same numbers. But I want to highlight the top three values. Now if we're actually looking at individual cell content, then we can use the built-in feature. I highlight the range, home, style, conditional formatting, top and bottom rules. There's top 10, bottom 10. We want the top 10. It's easy enough to change it to the top three. We simply change it to three. And I'm going to do custom formatting. We can do whatever we want. I want fill yellow. Click OK, click OK. And just like that, there is the top three. Now if we want the whole record highlighted, then we need to actually find the third biggest value. Now, instead of making our formula in the cell like we did with the average function in our last example, instead of having the large in every single cell and having to calculate many times, I'm simply going to put it in what's called a helper cell. Equals, and we can use the large function. The array, those are the numbers. I don't need to lock it because I'm not copying this anywhere. Comma. 1 would give us the max. 2 would give us the second biggest. We want to search for the third biggest. And when I hit Enter, I can clearly see that amongst all of these numbers is the third biggest. It's this one right here. Now, in the top left cell, I say equals. And I'm trying to ask the question for this whole record. Is the particular number, and I need to lock it with the F4 key one, two, three times, are you greater than or equal to the third largest? Now I'm going to hit F4. That needs to be locked everywhere. Now, you can compare this to the average function we just did. This cell is simply referring to the large function, which is calculating only once during recalculation. Control Enter, copy it over. This formula will be much more efficient in terms of calculating time. And there's our patterns of trues and falses. I can see for any particular cell, each cell in this row is locked on the number for this particular record. The criteria greater than or equal to is the third largest. When I go down a row, instantly it moves. Now we can edit mode and copy this, Control-C, Escape. Highlight the entire range. Active cell is the top left corner. Alt H L N, page down tab, control V. I'm going to add formatting, something like yellow. Click OK, click OK. And there we have it. Now, of course, this is dynamic. If I change this to 10,000 instantly, all of the conditional formatting changes. Control Z. And don't forget, anytime we put this over here, by all means, once we're done, we don't need it. Alt EAA. And there we go. By the way, Control Z. Alt EAA, of course, is just home, over to editing, clear, and clear all. Now let's go look at our next example, data bars. Now on this sheet, we have student quiz scores. 
The maximum score is 50. And over here, we've already calculated the frequency for our lower and upper limits. And what we'd like is a cell chart. Right in the cells, we're going to use conditional formatting to give us a bar chart so that 70 will get the tallest bar, 13 will get the smallest, and so on. It'll be exactly like a bar chart, but we'll accomplish it with conditional formatting. Now, we actually need the numbers in the cell. So right next to the frequency count, active cell at the top, I'm going to say equals one cell to my left. And to populate that formula through the highlighted range, Control and Enter. Now, we have numbers in the cells. Conditional formatting will work. Click Conditional Formatting, and there it is, Data Bars. We have Gradient Fill or Solid. I'm going to use Solid. And there it is. 70 is the tallest, 13 is the smallest, and each one of the numbers has a bar length that represents the number. Now, sometimes you want the numbers in the cells. Other times, like here, we don't want the numbers. We have already have the numbers right here. We can certainly edit, highlight the range, and if you want to edit, you go up to Conditional Formatting, Manage Rules, or you can use the keyboard Alt-O-D. We can click the Edit button, or we can double click. And there it is, Show Bar Only. If we check that, it will hide the numbers. I click OK, click OK. That is looking beautiful. Now, I actually want to prepare this for printing. And I want to add some borders, but I don't want borders everywhere. And I actually don't want any of the gray grid lines. So I'm going to turn the grid lines off. View, Show, Grid Lines, uncheck, and there you go. Now, I want not borders everywhere, but just a few borders. I want a line right here to distinguish between the limits and our count. And then I want a line right here to separate frequency and our data bars. Let's highlight Control-1 to open up Format Cells. And we want the Border tab. We select our line, then our color. The defaults will work for us. I'm going to select on the left and right. That means it'll put a line just on the left and the right. So I'm going to click, click. If you don't like to click, you can use these little icons down here. When I click OK, click off to the side, there's the two lines separating upper and lower limit frequency and data bars. Now I'd like a line below the label, so I'm going to highlight Control-1. I want it on the bottom. So I come over here, click on the bottom, click OK. Now I'd like one for our title. And this one's going to be a little bit darker, Control-1. I'm going to select Medium Line. And I want this on the bottom, so I click on the bottom, click OK. Now that's looking pretty good. We could print this out, and we have a great frequency table with our data bars. Now we want to go look at our next example, color scales. Now here we have percentage change in sales from last year for each one of the cities and each one of the months. And what we'd like is with color scale, we can add three colors. Red will represent the bottom third of the values. So anything with red will tell us that's in the bottom third. White will be the middle third. And blue will be the top third. So if, for example, Oakland has the biggest percentage changes, those will be mostly blue. And here's what's amazing about the color scale, is it will rank numbers by color. Even though there's only one, two, three colors, the reddest of the red, the darkest red, will be the minimum value. And then slowly, because white is the next color, it will be mixed with white, getting fainter and fainter till it gets all the way to white. The same thing will happen with blue. The maximum value will be the darkest blue. And then it will slowly add white till it gets towards the middle third. And this color scale is amazingly easy. We simply highlight all the numbers that are going to get the scale. We go up to Home, Conditional Formatting. And there it is, Color Scales. And I'm going to use this first one, Blue, White, Red, Color Scale. And instantly, there we go. Now check that out. We can clearly see a lot of red for Los Angeles, a lot of blue for Oakland. So we know. Lots of the biggest percentage changes were in Oakland. Lots of the smallest percentage changes 
we're in LA. We could also see Tacoma had some pretty good blues here. And it looks like San Francisco had some faint reds. Now, if you actually calculate the middle value called the median, you will get exactly four. And those are the white ones. So that's a pretty good way to visualize data. Now let's go and look at another example. We want to go see icons. Now on this sheet, we have Google stock prices. And what we'd like to do is calculate the difference. So here's 519. And then on 520, we went up by about $9. So I want the differences here. But then when it goes up, I want a green arrow pointing up. When it goes down, I want a red arrow pointing down. And if there happens to be no change, like right here, I want a sideways pointing yellow arrow. Now, I first need a formula to calculate the difference. So I'm going to say equals, hey, today's closing adjusted price. And I'm going to subtract yesterday's. And that'll tell me the difference up by $9.42. Now I'm going to copy this down. I'm going to copy it all the way one right before the last, because of course, we don't have two values to calculate the difference for that one. But there it is. We have some ups and downs. Now I'm going to Control Shift Down arrow and highlight this whole range. And when we go to Home, Conditional Formatting, here are icons. The way icons work are similar to color scales. But when you see three icons, it's going to mark all of the top third values as green, the middle third as yellow, and the bottom third as red. If you use four, it'll divide the data set into four parts, five into five parts. Now, we're going to have a problem, but we'll go edit this. If I click this, of course, what it's doing is it's dividing the data set into three parts. But let's go edit this. Remember, editing is Manage Rules or Alt-O-D. I can double click to edit this. And let's see what's going on here. There's three different icons. So there's three different upper and lower limits. Now, these are percents. So it's dividing based on percentage. The bottom 33% are red, middle 33% are yellow, and the top 33% or one third are green. I'm going to change these to numbers. And I'm going to say, Whenever you find greater than 0, then I want a green. Now, if I click this, I don't see an equal to 0, but that's not a problem. I'm going to say anything greater than or equal to 0 will get a yellow. But wait a second. Isn't there a conflict here? No, because the way it works is they'll apply the green one first. Then anything left over gets the yellow and then the red. So because all of the values bigger than 0 have a green, only the equal sign will be enacted here. And then everything less than 0 will get that. And click OK, click OK, and that is amazing. Now there's another way we can do this. And we actually could have done this right in the cell. If you only want to see the arrows, you can say equals, and I'm going to do the same formula, today's price minus yesterday's. And notice, when I copy this down, sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's 0, sometimes it's positive. Well, there's a specific function, F2, that will take any positive number and deliver a 1, any 0 and deliver 0, and any negative number and deliver minus 1. And it's called, hey, give me the sign, the sign of the number. Close parentheses, Control, Enter, and I can copy this down. And so now we're going to have just 1's, minus 1, and 0. And notice that perfectly divides the set into three pieces. Minus 1 is in the bottom third, 0 is the middle third, and 1 is the upper third. Now I go to Conditional Formatting, Icons, and I'm going to select this one. And instantly, we get the correct arrows. Alt-O-D, because I'm going to double click and hide. Show icon only. Click OK. Click OK. And so there you go. Lots of times you'll see spreadsheets with the actual change or difference, whether it's stock price or sales or daily units or whatever. And then next to it, you can use this conditional formatting icon trick to give us arrows. Now let's go look at our next example. It's whole column. We saw how to highlight a whole row, but what we'd like is a whole column. 
So I'm going to highlight the entire range. And instead of building our formulas first in the cells, this is a relatively easy formula. And sometimes you want to go straight to the dialog box and build it. Now, the formula we're going to need is that every cell in this column has to look at the column header. But when we copy over to February, every cell in this column has to look at the column header for February. Each one of these column headers has to be compared to the month we select up here. All right, so the active cell is in the upper left corner. I'm going to use the keyboard, Alt-H-L-N, Page Down, Tab. And now I'm going to build my formula. Now, click on the first column header. Now remember, even though all of these cells are getting the conditional formatting, we're certainly allowed to look at some cell outside, of course. Now this needs to be locked when we copy down, so it has to be locked on B5. But when I copy it to the side, it needs to move to C5. So I hit the F4 key once. Now, I didn't actually hit it. Notice that the default is always absolute in this dialog box here. So all I have to do is hit F4 one time to lock the row, but not the column. Then I need to ask the question, are you equal to the July or whatever criteria we select up here? Now, notice it's absolute. When we first click on a cell, and that's what we want here. Now, that won't work. Now, I'm going to format this, and I'm not just going to add the same old yellow. I actually would like to add some number formatting. And the reason why, these percentages have zero decimals showing. And when I select a month, I want to expose a bunch of hidden decimals. So I'm going to go over to Percentage, Select to, click OK. Now, when I click OK here, the conditional formatting does two things. It adds the fill and the number formatting. But now we simply come up here, and this is so cool. I'm going to select May, and instantly I see highlighted in yellow and decimals exposed. If I want to see January, boom, there it is. All right, so that's conditional formatting for an entire column. Now let's go over to the sheet and and or. We're going to talk about conditional formatting with and logical test and an or logical test. Now I am going to build this one in the cells over here. But notice, for each one of the records, we're going to have to ask two questions. Is the sales rep equal to whatever we select here? And is the customer equal to whatever we selected here? Now I'm going to come over here. Two conditions, right? They both have to come out true. That's the perfect job for the and function. Logical test for this record. Sales rep, and I need to lock it, F4, 1, 2, 3 times. As I copy across the columns, it needs to be locked on A5. But when I copy down, it needs to move to A6, A7, and so on. And then I ask the question, are you equal to sales rep selected from that cell? F4. There's the first logical test. Comma. The second one, hey, I'm going to look at customer and lock it with the F4 key, 1, 2, three times. Column lock, but not the row. Are you equal to Google? F4, close parentheses, Control Enter. Copy it to the side, and then copy it down. We're looking for our patterns of trues and falses. It looks like Dewan Google. We got trues everywhere. So that whole row will have whatever formatting we choose. I'm going to the last cell, F2. It looks like we got all the cell references working. Now I'm going to copy the upper left-hand cell in Edit Mode, Control-C, Escape. Now I highlight, making sure that the upper left corner is the active cell. Alt-H-L-N, Page Down Tab, Control-V. Now I'm going to format it just with yellow. Click OK. Click OK. And just like that, when I come over here and I select GG, there are no records where GG sold to Google customer. If I select Mo, there is one. So that's AND. Now OR. We learned before that we could use the OR function to check this customer against the first customer in our list. And then check this one again against Amazon. And then this one against IBM. We could use the OR with three logical tests. But also, when you see this situation, we have a list here, and we have a single item. Is this item over in this list? Anytime that's the logical test, yes, it's an OR 
logical test, but we can use the match function to ask, hey, is this IBM in this list over here? So I'm going to equals match. And now the lookup value is going to be customer. And when I copy it across the columns, I need it locked on the B. So I hit F4 one, two, three times. Lock the column, but not the row. That's the lookup value, comma, lookup array. That's this list of customers. F4, comma, zero, because that list is not sorted. Close parentheses. Now, two things about using match for or logical test. One is, is if you have a bunch of criteria here, this is going to be much faster than creating that or formula. Also, we're going to learn something about the conditional formatting dialog box and errors. Control Enter. We know that when we get a number, that's the relative position. So IBM was in 1, 2, 3, the third relative position. When I copy it down, we know that NAs means the item was not in the list. So target is not in this list. Now, the great thing about this is in the cells, we have problems with errors like this. It can cause great trouble, but not in the conditional formatting dialog box. Remember, our complete list of what triggers formatting to get the formatting, it's either true or any non-zero number. What triggers no formatting is false, zero, or errors. So from the upper left corner, I F2, copy it in edit mode, control C, escape, highlight. Make sure the upper left corner is the active cell. Alt H L N, page down tab, control V. There's our formula. Format, and we can format it however we want. When I click OK, click OK, just like that, I have conditionally formatted an or logical test using the match function. Now, if I delete all these, of course, now we get nothing. But now if I select target and vans, just like that, it is working. Now, let's go look. We have a couple more conditional formatting examples. Let's go look at weekend. This is a great example. This is a schedule. And we have all of these days. And here's the times we, we type things here for particular appointments. But what we would like is, since this is a template, I want to be able to just change these dates. And whenever it is a weekend or a holiday, and weekends for this company are Fridays and Saturdays, or a holiday, which is May 30th, we want to automatically add some color. In essence, the color will say this is blocked out. Now, this one's going to require that we create our formula over in the cells because we're going to use a brand new function called net workdays. Now, net workdays is an older function. In 2010, they came out with net workdays dot international. And dot international does some amazing things. Now, before we use networkdays.international for our conditional formatting trick, let's just figure out how this function works. Now, if we have a list of days like this, we know how to count the days. We take the last day minus the first day. It tells us how many days in between those two dates. But what if we want only work days? That's where this function comes in. You give it the start date, comma, the end date, and then you tell it what your weekend is. Our company has weekends of Friday and Saturday. Now, what makes the dot international amazing is this list. In earlier versions, we only had Saturday and Sunday. So I'm going to select 7 for Friday and Saturday, comma. And then we need our holidays. It will skip over the holidays also. Now I'm going to hit F4. Close parentheses. Right now, we're just seeing how networkdays.international works. There are 15 work days within that range of dates. By itself, it's pretty amazing. But here's how we're going to use it. I'm going to give it the start date right here. And I'm going to lock it with the F4 key one, two, three times. And we're going to do something really crazy to end date. I'm going to use the same start date and then lock it with the F4 key one, two, three times. Now, what in the world would that do? Anytime you have the same start and end date, you can only get a count of one when this shows up as a workday. And you get a count of zero when it shows up as a weekend or holiday. 
So that's our formula. Control-Enter. Copy it over. Copy it down. Now, it's almost our formula because, of course, all of these ones, if we dumped them into conditional formatting dialog box, would give us true. And that would be highlighting the actual work days. That's not what we want. So we're going to amend this formula because what do we want? We want to ask the question, when does networkdays.international come out to be 0? We just say, when you're equal to 0. That is a logical formula with a comparative operator. Now, it will deliver true when it sees a 0. Double click and send it down. And there's our pattern of trues and falses. Now, we can see for this Monday, May 30th, true, 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 true. All of those trues will be formatting this row. So I'm going to go up F2, copy and edit mode, Control C, Escape, highlight the range. Active cell in the upper left hand cor corner, Alt H L N, page down, tab. And now I'm going to Control V, format however you want it. I'm going to add yellow. Click OK. Click OK. And just like that, the whole row is blocked out because that is either a weekend or a holiday. When these dates change, everything will update. Now we have one last example we want to go over to the sheet, not in list. Now here's our example we did back in our lookup video. Here's a library database of all the books we should have. Here's the list of the inventory count. We're interested in the books that are missing, so we have to say, are you not in this list? Anytime we're comparing two lists, we start off with the match function. And actually, we did this exact formula with a column of trues and falses back in look, our lookup video. We're going to ask the question, hey, lookup value, I'm looking up this book in the library database, comma. Lookup array, that's the entire list of books we found in our inventory count. Control Shift Down Arrow F4, comma zero because the lists are not sorted. Close parentheses and match of course delivers the relative position. The Stone's diary is in the 83rd position in our inventory list. Now I'm going to copy this down, and of course numbers mean they're in both lists. We are interested in the NAs. That means the book is missing. That book is not over in this list. So what do I do at the top? F2 in the active cell. I ask the question, is NA, which says, are you an NA? When it sees an NA, it will deliver a true. Close parentheses. I want to populate this edited formula all the way down, so I control Enter. And there you go. There's our trigger for the book is missing. So I come to the top cell, F2. Copy it in edit mode, control C, escape. Click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow. I'm going to use Control Backspace just to jump back to the active cell. Alt H L N, Page Down Tab, Control V, and there's our formula. Format, and I'm going to use Fill Red Font White to mean this is a missing book. This is trouble. All right, now I'm going to click OK, and there it is. We have conditionally formatted this entire list. So it's easy to see the books that are missing. Wow, that was a lot of amazing things about conditional formatting. We saw how to conditionally format not in a list. We learned how to conditionally format for the weekend. We talked about AND and OR conditional formatting. We conditionally formatted a whole column. We used icons. We did this amazing color scales, data bars. And our first three examples, actually six examples, we did top three with built-in and formulas, below average with built-in and formulas. And we started it off with, does the cell contain built-in? Does the record contain a particular item? All right, that was a lot of fun with conditional formatting. Next video, we'll have an introduction to dashboards. All right, we'll see you next video.